Hey, welcome back. Say hi, Matteo. <laughs> I've been asked what breed he is. Well, he's an eight-week-old purebred miniature Dachshund with very unusual special spots. <laughs> Something that we love. A non-conformist individual. Do you have a new puppy or are you thinking about a new family member but don't know what to feed them or more importantly how to feed them? We're going to go into a series of episodes covering all things diary related for your little guy <laughs> and he will be starring front and centre. Let's hope he stays awake. <laughs> well, what the heck can you feed them? I hear you asking. Hmm. I wanted to make this series to explain to you that it's not just a bowl of puppy kibble. That stuff is expensive and you can do so much better simply by feeding real foods, not highly processed junk food like that stuff. Okay, well, we navigated through day one, Matteo, and now we've had a good sleep. Well, some of us has, thanks, buddy. <laughs> and now the real diet transitioning begins. If you missed the first day at home and want to learn about feeding your brand new puppy on day one, check out the link below. Now, day two and beyond. Are you ready, little man? <laughs> Who am I kidding? You and your spots were born ready, weren't they? <laughs> okay, to recap, yesterday was day one at home with us after a very stressful flight and car drive, not to mention meeting his new brothers and sisters for the very first time. So let's get stuck into the next seven days of feeding him and I'll give you the exact formulas so all of your stress is removed. I know what it's like with a new baby. You're unsure, a little frightened of making mistakes and possibly hurting them. I had the same level of stress bringing our first born human home as what I have bringing a new puppy home as well. Completely understand. And everyone is telling you a million different things and your confusion is stress levels go crazy high. This is why I'm going in depth through this process. Stop, don't stress. With some knowledge and planning, you have totally got this covered. Okay, puppy feeding 101. Let's start at the very beginning. How many times a day should you feed your puppy and how much should you actually be feeding them? Well, this is an easy answer. Puppies from eight weeks of age should be eating a minimum of three times every 24 hours or four times, which I prefer every 24 hours. I always prefer the smaller four meal quantities spread out during the day. And this is where the training starts. Do not feed your puppy during the night when you and they should be sleeping. I found feeding the first meal at 7 a.m. and then one every five hours after that works in well with our schedule and our other dog's dinner time is at 5 p.m. So for us, it's 7 a.m., 12 noon, 5 p.m. and supper is at 9 p.m. We've brought his supper time forward by one hour to let him digest and process and we have enough time to take him out to the toilet before bed. This makes the overnight toilet trips far less. And let's face it, peeing and pooping during the hours we generally like to sleep is just a tad inconvenient. But <laughs> there's a joy, I suppose, of having a new baby. Sleep deprivation and cleaning up messes. Lucky Mateo is so damn cute. Hey, while you're at it, please like and subscribe if you want more of this sort of in-depth content about your puppy or your adult dogs. Okay, back to the food. All right, day two, we need to introduce some raw solids into the cooked chicken soup to firm up his poops and get them into a routine. The cooked chicken soup is a simple broth. Check out the episode one linked below for the recipe. Halve the soup broth and replace it with half raw chicken mince. Note, I'm only using one protein here. Okay, the chicken broth and raw chicken was chosen for little Matteo because the burrito, burrito was feeding him raw chicken uh, to wean him from his uh, from his mum. So I know it will be well received and it won't cause any crazy squirty bum problems. I've also included a pinch of psyllium husks to his meal and all the rest of his meals for the next week for a couple of reasons. Talking a tiny pinch, that much. Every meal, there we go, just like that. Perfect. Now, these husks contain no nutritional value and are insoluble. They are a prebiotic, that is, insoluble fibre that serves two purposes. The first one is to firm up his poops. The second one is to slow his digestive process and enable his gut microbiome to grow. That is, the good bacteria in his stomach that enables him to digest his food. It's actually a prebiotic, as I've mentioned. Now, how much should you be feeding your puppy? Well, it's a formula based on their weight and it's a good guide to work with. It's just a guide. Remember, every dog is different, just like every human and their metabolisms are different. Some are super crazy active and need more rock fuel to keep them going. Others are quiet and calm and need far less food. Mateo is the first, by the way. But the baseline is a minimum of 10% of their current body weight. Keep track of this. They grow so fast at this stage and their weight will change from week to week. Just give them away once a week to double check. 
Now, Matteo is currently weighing in at a whopping a one kilo. Therefore, he needs 100 grams of food per a 24 hour period. So that's four meals weighing 25 grams each. Do you have a four kilo puppy? That's 10% of 400, so 400 grams of food per day, 100 grams per meal, over four meals. Okay, so our second day meals look like this for Matteo. Meal one and meal two, half chicken soup and half chicken mince with a pinch of psyllium husks. Goat's milk is brilliant for puppies as it's lactose free. It's high in very easy to digest proteins and his breeder has also used it to help wean him from his mum's milk. This will fill in some gaps nutrient wise until we can gradually transition him to a full diet next week. Let him drink as much as he wants. Just offer it after the mince. Mateo at this stage is drinking about 50 mils per serving. Okay, meal three and four, just the plain chicken mince with a pinch of your psyllium husks, just like so, and a little side dish or a chaser of this lovely goat's milk. Okay, we made it to day three. His poops are good, soft but formed, and he's settling in nicely, so he's calmer and not as stressed out. He's getting the idea of his space and what's expected of him. Day three is more of the same, raw chicken mince, psyllium husks, and his goat's milk four meals worth, as I've already mentioned. Now, this may seem painfully slow to you, and it is, but I've avoided the digestive shock that so many new puppy parents experience. And it's scary, and you'll have to make a vet appointment and freak out, and your vet will tell you just to feed the awful puppy kibble because you've got squirty bum everywhere. This approach is your surefire guarantee way to avoid this problem and <laughs> avoid that vet visit. Right, we're up to day four. Now, day four is the introduction of another protein. In this case, it's gonna be pork. Pork is a cool protein and is usually very well received by puppies. A lot of people don't think you can feed pork to dogs. This is not the case at all. It is true for pork products like bacon or ham. These are a no-no, but this beautiful pork top side that I'm feeding him is fantastic. I've left the pork in larger pieces. I'd love to feed all my dogs like this for two reasons. Firstly, they prefer the larger pieces. Secondly, the chewing action is great for teeth and gums and it also stimulates their digestion. Who wants to eat soft mush? Same number of meals, same goat's milk chaser. So simply change out half of the chicken mince and replace it with half the raw pork chunks for the first two meals of the day. Meals three and four can all be pork. Remove the chicken altogether. He's still getting four serves of goat's milk a day and don't forget a little bit of psyllium on top of all. Don't forget the psyllium husks. This works in conjunction with the goat's milk as a prebiotic, and the goat's milk is a mild probiotic. Together, they are building his gut microbiome, which is vital for a healthy, robust dog. Now we're getting exciting. Day five is the introduction of bones, in this case, a chicken neck. Same number of meals, you can reduce the goat's milk chaser to just two of those four meals today. Now is the time to remove the psyllium husks as the small amount of bone matter that he will be eating will keep his poop firm. If your puppy's not had bones, or you just don't know if he has or not, the trick here is just to simply offer him a raw meaty bone that is bigger than their head so they don't swallow it whole. You may need to step in as mum here and teach your puppy what to do with this tasty looking thing. Simply hold it in your hand and let him have a chew. Then lots and lots of praise. He needs to chew on his bone happily without hiding it from you or trying to swallow it whole. This positive reinforcement is important. You are setting him up for life and dogs need raw bones for so many reasons. Hold it in your hand, let him go crazy. He's learning how tasty it is as well and he's, you're not gonna take it away from him. He needs the calcium as well as the teeth cleaning and it's a self-soothing behavior as well. Right, day six and day seven are pretty much the same. Just introduce another protein. In this case, it's gonna be beef. Same number of meals, same amount of protein. Same goat's milk chaser twice a day. Meals one and two, simply remove half the pork and replace it with half the beef. Meals three and four can both be 100% beef. Day seven is another opportunity to offer a raw meaty bone. Just make sure it's one of the proteins you've already offered during the week. In this case, beef or pork or chicken. I'm gonna introduce him to a beef tail. Again, hold on to your hand and let him have a really good chew. Next week, we'll go into edible bones that you need to start to introduce. And these are mostly chicken because of the digestibility and size for him. Well, week one is no way a complete or balanced meal plan. It's just the easiest and most foolproof way of hitting the ground running and avoiding all that scary transitional squirty bum that so many puppies can suffer from. Well, little Matteo, I can't wait to see how much you grow and hopefully you will love your food as much as your brothers and sisters will do. Although, I think you're already there. 
food focused. <laughs> the good thing for us is your food obsession will make training a breeze. Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss the next episode. I'll cover how to transition him into a complete and varied diet that includes offal, seafood, eggs, veggies, and a whole lot more. A fully fed raw diet for puppies is not hard. Episode three of Puppy Diet 101 covers the next three weeks of his food plan, setting him up for success without that squirty bum.